Hi guys, I'm Aaron Ruck. Today what we're going to do is we're going to go through kind of a lengthy lecture on how to actually format and program our part, okay? So we're going to keep it as simple as we can, but what we're going to do is we're going to tackle this part right here and we're going to do a G71 roughing can cycle, a G70 finishing can cycle, we're going to do a G75 grooving can cycle, and then a G76 threading can cycle and then with this part right here we'll go ahead and we'll just use a G75 to part it off when we're done okay so we're gonna go from a blank program all the way to the end of it okay so bear with me because we're gonna get through this together okay so the first thing I'm gonna do when I look at this part is I'm gonna say okay where do I start okay so I'm gonna start by doing my uh, OD G71 roughing can cycle. But before I do that, I need a way to format the machine. Now, there's a lot of ways to do this. We're gonna stick with a simple structure and it's gonna be coming out of your Haas programming workbook. So let's go ahead and open that up and let's see what that looks like, okay? This is really great because you can use this code right here for every part you ever program because the structure and the idea behind it is all gonna be the same. So let's go ahead and let's start. I have an O and then a 00084, okay? That is gonna be one letter O. You cannot have more than one O in your program. So be careful when you're typing in all these zeros throughout your program that you do not hit the letter O or it will throw up an error, all right? So we're gonna do O, program name. We'll do uh, G28. Uh, that way it just sends the machine home and then we're going to do the tool call up a G50 for our spindle cap a G97 and then we'll go to our clear point and then we're going to turn on our constant surface speed that's a lot let's go ahead and write it in there okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and try to remember as much as I can we have to put a percent sign at the top of our program so we have a percent sign then we're going to have our letter O and then we're gonna have our zero, I'm gonna call it a four, okay? Just so you guys kinda of understand what the difference is between the zero and the O, that's what I'm gonna put in there, okay? So the first thing I like to do is I'll have all my tool descriptions and stuff like that, but for this one right here, we're gonna put an M01 because I don't want anything to happen unless I tell it to, okay? Then I'm gonna have a T101 and right here in between it, I'm gonna put a tool description right here, okay? We're gonna call it a CNMG432, all right? That just lets me know what the tool is that's supposed to be in the turret, okay? This is for the operator to know. Nothing in my parentheses will be read by the machine, all right? So I've got my T010. Let's come back to our paper and see what else we got. Our spindle cap, our G97, our clear plane, and our uh, spindle surface speed. All right, so let's go turn on our spindle with a G97. S will go 400. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and let's look at it one more time. We can we can never look at it too many times. Okay, let's put our spindle cap in here right before it. G50. Let's say 2000. Okay. Now we're going to move towards our part with a G0, which is a rapid move, okay? Not G letter O, G0. And then we're going to move 100 thousandths above the raw material of our part, okay? Or the biggest diameter. So let's look at that real quick. So on our part, we have a two inch diameter, okay? So I'd be using probably, we'll just say for this instance, exactly two inches on my raw material, okay? So I wanna be a hundred thousandths above that diameter, okay? So let's go back to our program where we were at. And then I'm gonna type in X, two inches, one hundred thousandths. And when I move in my Z, I'm going to be Z positive two hundred thousandths and of course if you want to you can put a g54 in here we'll go ahead and put it on the end that way our machine knows what work offset we're using normally i go g0 g54 x and z okay so that's kind of what i got on here next thing i want on here 
is that G97, but I'm gonna turn on my coolant first. So I'm gonna go M08, and then I'll go ahead and turn on the G96, and we'll go ahead and put it at, if we're cutting stainless steel, I'd recommend going about 300, okay? But my max, my cap right here, that 2000, that would be more like 1000, okay? But we're gonna be cutting aluminum, so I'm gonna go ahead and double that, okay? So we're gonna go G96 S 600 for my surface speed. Now here's another thing, on the G97, the S400, I, my machine needs to know what direction it's turning. We're gonna be going clockwise with an M03. So let's go back to our print here and let's see what else our code has for us, okay? So I got a G97S, of course, like I said, I forgot the M3, so we're gonna put that M3 on there. And then, looks like they're turning on the coolant while they're moving to my clear plane. So that works out just fine. I've got my G96, my S on there, okay? So now, this usually goes through, this program example is actually going to face the part off. Now what we're gonna do, we have to take off a hundred thousandths off the face of our part so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the facing and the turning all with the G71, okay? That way the pressure of my tool will be going towards the chuck when it's roughing instead of trying to push the part out of the chuck, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip this right here and we're gonna go right to, because we're already here, we're gonna go right into our G71, go right into it, okay? So with that said, we're going to go G71 P Q U W D F. Okay. If you're not familiar with these, watch the other video. It kind of explains what all it's all about. Okay. So from right here, I'm 200 thousandths in front of my part. That way, if I want to take off a hundred thousandths off the front of my part, I can simply move in with my work offset and I'll still have a hundred thousandths of clearance in front of my part. That'll make sense later. All right. So I'm ready. I'm at my clear plane. I'm gonna type in G71, okay? And let's go back here and let's double check this. Oh, it's gonna be a P, 10, Q, 20, okay? This P and this Q, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be P1000, it could be Q2000. As long as your N on the next line matches, okay? I've got my U, we're gonna leave 10 thousandths on here. I've got my W, I'm going to leave five thousandths on here, okay? And then I have a D for my depth of cut. Maximum depth of cut I want you all taking is 50 thousandths. I'm roughing, so my roughing feed rate is going to be between 12 and 15. We're not in any hurry. We'll go ahead and put it at 12 thousandths inches per revolution, okay? First thing I want to do, we'll come back to our print real quick. Let's show you all where the path is at. So here's my clear point right here. 100 thousandths above the part next on the raw material. I'm 200 thousandths in front of it on the uh, Z. So that way, if I need to take off 100 thousandths, I can put a minus 100 thousandths on my G54, and I still will have clearance in front of my part when I start roughing all that material out of there, okay? So we'll move it back there. So my tool path is gonna look just like this. We'll go ahead and change up the color real quick. I'm gonna go right here. I can either rapid or I can feed. It's up to you, okay? I'm gonna rapid because I'm moving in space. There's nothing there, okay? Then I'm going to feed to right there. I'll tell you what, we'll go ahead and change our color for our feed rate. Go ahead and make it blue. Of course, it lost my green there for a second, so let's go ahead and put that back in there. Okay? And it's going to lose this, so keep in mind where it's at. So now I'm going to feed up, over, up, radius, all the way over, up, radius, and then I'm going to go past that right there, and then I'm going to rapid off of my part, okay? My P, okay, 
is going to be right here. My Q will be right there. Okay. So I'm going to plot all these points, all these points that I'm plotting. This is the biggest thing for you. We're going to plot all these points as we go. We're not going to plot it right now. Notice how I have a point before the radius and after the radius. We have to know what those are. I'm going to come past it. I'm just going to come past it by like a hundred thousandths. And then right here is my Q. Okay. This is where I'm going to turn off cutter comp. G40. This is where I'm going to turn on cutter comp. G42. Okay. This is what we're going to do. We're not going to plot it out right now. We're going to plot it as we go and type it in. All right. So let's erase this. Erase all. Okay. So now let's go back to our screen and let's see where we're going to start. Obviously, we're going to start right there at X0 and then we're going to move to Z0. All right. So N10 is simply going to be G42. Okay. We're in rapid. We're still in rapid because we haven't came out of rapid. G42 X0. Very important. The next line is going to be a G01 Z0. All right. We're going to feed. We're not going to wrap it to the face of our part. We'll crash. Okay. Also very important. Put your feed rate for your finish right here. Okay. This feed rate will not override the 12 thousandths. Okay. This feed rate will only pick up in the G70. All right. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move up to the top of my threads. I'll show you why. So I moved here, I moved here. Now I need to move up to the top of my threads. I got a one inch, eight threads per inch. Okay. I will not move to X one inch. It says that right there, but that's not how we program it. We're going to program it correctly. All right. So let's get rid of this. Like I said, we need to move to this point right here. Let's find out where that point is at. So let's go to our Machinery's handbook is what we need to be in. Obviously, you see that we have a, a one inch eight here. Okay. Got one inch eight, it's a two A. We come all the way across here. Okay. All I'm worried about right now are those numbers right there. That 998 thousandths and that 983 thousandths. The reason why is because this is an external thread and that is the maximum diameter of that thread. Okay. So my maximum, it can't be one inch because the biggest it can be on the diameter is 998 thousandths. The smallest it can be is 983 thousandths. So I'm just going to pick a number that's in that range. I'm going to go with 990 thousandths. That's what I'm going to go with right there. So let's get rid of this. 990 thousandths. Okay. Let's go ahead and switch back to our screen. We're going to go to X 990 thousandths. Okay. That's where we're going to be at. Next thing we're going to do, let's go back to our print. All right, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to move from here to there. Obviously, our answer is right there, one inch. So anytime I move somewhere, I'm done. That line is over. If you put an X and a Z in the same line, it's going to make a diagonal pass. And that's not what we want to do, okay? So Z is going to be one inch. Negative one inch, okay, because we're going into the part, okay, and X we're going positive, Z we're going negative into the part, okay, it's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and move this up a little bit, all right, let's come back to where we were, 
Okay, so now we're back here. We need to move to right there. Okay, now here's something that gets a lot of people confused. You'll hear me say, when you're moving on a radius or a chamfer, x times two, z times one. What does that mean? That means I need to be at that diameter, okay? But I need to be here before I get there. So right here is my radius. That is my X axis, okay? I'm moving up in X to that location. That location is below one inch, 500 thousandths. Therefore, I will do 1.5 minus the radius 0 0.05, okay? times two, because it's times two in X, it's times one in Z. So right here, my Z is still one inch, but my X is gonna move up to 1.5 minus 50 thousandths times two, because I have a radius right here, and I have a radius right there. That's why it works that way, all right? So let's pull up our calculator, let's do it. Not like it's that hard, let's not do it. 100 thousandths. 1.5 minus 100 thousandths equals 100 or one inch 400 thousandths okay so let's go back to our screen x 100 one inch 400 thousandths okay come back here so now i'm right here now i'm going to swing a radius g01 is linear interpolation g02 is clockwise interpolation, clockwise, okay? This is a clockwise motion, therefore it is a G02. G03 would be if I came here and I did a radius like that, that is a counterclockwise, okay? All right, so we're gonna move to this position. That is going to be a G02. Our X is gonna be where we're going to end at, okay? X is 1.5. Now that one times in Z, right? I'm gonna add my radius one time. Okay, obviously that's gonna be one inch 50 thousandths, okay? I have to have my X and my Z on the same line because I'm moving in both axes, all right? So let's go back here, G, zero two x one inch five hundred thousandths z minus it's got to be a bigger negative than where i was or you'll get a non-monotonous move one inch fifty thousandths all right now i need one more thing on here i'm swinging a fifty thousandths radius the machine needs to have the r on there before I go any further, I'm in a modal mode. I'm in a circular interpolation mode. So every X and Y that I do after that is just gonna go in a circle. I need to go back to G01 because I'm going to make a straight line move, a linear interpolation move, all right? So now I'm gonna go from here straight back right there, okay? Obviously our answer is gonna be, let's try it again. Going right there. Our answer's on the board, okay? Two inches. I'm gonna go two inches negative in Z, all right? The reason why I'm not moving incrementally is because G54 is the distance from the face of my part. This is my X, Z, zero, all right? So two inches. Z minus two inches, that's it, okay? Next move. I'm again, I'm gonna to go to the bottom of my radius, okay? I'm not going to two inches. That's gonna be two inches minus the radius times two, okay? Radius times two is 300 thousandths, okay? So all I'm gonna do is two inches minus 300 thousandths is gonna be one inch, 700 thousandths, all right? That's it. That is our move. X is going to be one inch, 700 thousandths, all right? Now we're about to go into a, another radius, okay? 
I'm right here. I'm about to move to this point right there. So I'm gonna turn on G02. G02, and then I'm going to finish, that will be my X at a two inch diameter, and my Z, if I'm at two inches, I'm gonna move Z, the radius, times one, plus 150. So it's gonna be two inches, 150, and then I will have to include the radius. All right, so let's go back and do it. I've got two inches right there, all right? So I've got G02, X, two inches, okay, positive, we're moving up an X, Z is going to be a minus, let me double check, two inches, 150 thousandths, okay, two inches, 150 thousandths, and I need the R, R, 150 thousandths, okay, before I go any further, G01, I've got to put it back into linear interpolation mode, okay? So now, I'm right here. I'm going to move 100 thousandths past this point. If you want to go right to that point, I mean, you can, but it might leave an L shoe. Don't want to do that, okay? Explain to that later. All right, so we're going to go 100 thousandths past the overall length, okay? 100, you go 200, you go 300. We're just, we're just, we're just grabbing a number, okay? So we're going to go Z negative 3 inches plus 100 thousandths. That's it. Okay? So let's go Z minus 3 inches 100 thousandths. Write that one more time. 3 inches 100 thousandths. Okay, we're not done yet, okay? We got one more move. So I turned on cutter comp right here with the G42. If you turn it on, you got to turn it off. So I'm right here, and I'm going to rapid. That's green, okay? We're going to rapid. That's going to be a G0, G40, okay? We're going to move off the part to the diameter that we started off with, which was 2 inches, 100 thousandths. If you go more than 2 inches, 100 thousandths, you could program this thing right, and it's still going to give you an error because it doesn't, the machine logic doesn't understand, okay? You could come up two inches, 10 thousandths, 15 thousandths. She's got to come up more than the radius of your tool, all right? Explain that later as well. Try not to give you too much, all right? So we're going to go G0. Get over here so you can see it better. G0, X, two inches, 100 thousandths, and I'm going to turn off G4. That's a horrible four, okay? It's not any better, all right? That's it. This G71 is completed, all right? This whole code is now completed. So what I'll do next is I'll go ahead and move this up a little bit more because now that we've completed this, we have to come back and we have to finish the part. So we have to do this whole profile because we left 10 thousandths here. So my part right now is one inch, 510 thousandths and X, okay? G70, G70 is a finishing can cycle. There's not much to it, all right? All we're gonna do is we're gonna go G70, and I need to use the same P and Q. Speaking of P and Q, I need an N20 right here, okay? Because my P, on my G71, P10, N10, Q20, N20. That has to be on the line. That signifies that the can cycle is completed. All right, back to where we were. Okay, P10, Q20. That's it. You do not need a feed rate right here because the feed rate is already at the top of our program. All right. Now that we've ran this tool, I'm going to turn off my coolant and then I'm going to send the machine home. I'm going to go G28. Depends on what machine you're on. For this machine, we're going to send it home in U and W. 
zero. Let's go look back at our Haas programming workbook and let's see what it shows. So when that tool is done, okay, very good. It just has a, a G28 on there, okay? And it turns on the spindle to a constant spindle speed. Not hurting anything to not keep that on it, but that was it. We did our P, our N10, we did all this, okay? Then N20, G40 turned it off. That's it. We pretty much did that whole thing on that one part, all right? Now that we've got our G71 completed, let's do our G75, all right? So on our print, I've got these two grooves right here. I've got a groove right here, and I've got a groove right here. So let's go into our program, into our machinery, into our Haas manual, see if we can get there. I'm going to search down to a G75 can cycle, okay? This is really short. This is not going to take very long, okay? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put an M01, okay, because the optional stop, I want to check my OD diameters and keep and, and check them before I keep running, all right? Don't just hit cycle start and finish the part with it being scrap, okay? We're out of tolerance. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to do M01, we're going to call up the tool, call up the spindle speed, give it the clear point. I mean, it's the same thing, all right? So let's go back to our program. We're going to go M01, okay? Got my tool description, okay? It's in parentheses, grooving. Parentheses, remember, everything in parentheses I will not read. All right, let's scoot this up a little bit. Got our M01, got our grooving. Let's double check this, calling up the tool, going where we need it to go. So I've got tool 202, I'm gonna go G0. Uh, let's see, let's call up our spindle speed real quick. Let's go G96, S600. We're gonna keep the same surface speed, but we're gonna turn on our spindle, okay? G96 and G97 will turn on the spindle. So if you don't want to do G97, you don't have to. All right, G0, G54, X, our, our diameter was two inches. We're just gonna stay safe. We're gonna go up to two inches, 100 thousandths, okay? As long as there's no material there, you can't run into it. But I'm just using this for this demonstration. Now my Z, okay, what is my Z gonna be? So we're gonna have to figure that out, all right? And we'll also, we'll turn on the coolant as we move to that line, okay? So on here, I'm moving 100 thousandths in front of the part. Let's go ahead and put it at 100 thousandths, all right? So we'll get rid of that. Z, 100 thousandths in front of the part. Now, I'm gonna move to a starting location on my G75, okay? I have to move to the starting position plus the width of my insert, all right? Then after that, we're just gonna plug in this code. So let's come back here and let's check it out. So my groove, okay, is 700 thousandths back, this right here, all right? But that is not, let's see if it'll let me get rid of that. Nope, won't let me get rid of that now. Anyway, my groove starts right here, all right? So that means that I have to be 700 thousandths plus the width of my grooving insert, which is 125 thousandths. So 700 plus 125 thousandths equals 825 thousandths, okay? So all I'm gonna do from here is I'm just gonna go Z minus point 825 thousandths, that's it. I don't have to do anything else. Now, I'm gonna do my G75, okay? Let's go back to our variables and see what all is there. Come back here, let's look at our programming workbook. G75, X, that's how, that's the finished diameter in X. Z, how far back the groove is gonna go. I and a K, I is how much I'm pecking, K is how far I'm going back between steps, F is 50, uh, uh, five thousandths, okay, that's my feed rate. 
my insert is 125 thousandths wide, I'm only gonna move 100 thousandths over, all right? So with that said, let's come back to our print. All right, so we're gonna go to an X of, where's our X at? Do we have an X on here? Doesn't look like we have an X on here. So what we'll do is we'll go below what our dimension was. So for example, if we were at night or at the bottom of our threads right here, this point 849, I'm gonna take that down to 825. So this right here is gonna be 825 thousandths, okay? That's how, that's how small I'm gonna go with my groove on the diameter, all right? How far back am I going? One inch, answer's on the paper, all right? So let's go back to where we were. Let's go X, 825 thousandths, Z minus one inch, okay? I, here, let's do it, there it goes, 0 0.050. Okay, then I'm gonna go K is how far I'm stepping over. I'm just gonna step over 100 thousandths, and then I have a feed rate, okay, of 0, 0, 0,005. That's it. That groove is all done, okay? When it gets done grooving, it's gonna come back up to this X, two inches, 100 thousandths. We don't have to turn it off, we don't have to do nothing. That line of code right there did that entire groove easy all right now i'm up here i need to move to right there all right so i need to move right here plus the width of my insert tool so i'm going to move one inch seven hundred thousandths plus the width of my insert tool my grooving tool so that's going to be one inch eight hundred and twenty five thousandths so let's come back over here all I'm going to do is do Z minus 1 inch, 825 thousandths. Then, all I'm going to do is do another G75. G75, we got our X, our Z, our I will stay the same. It's not going to be a minus, it's going to be a positive number. Our K will be 100 thousandths, and then our F will be 5 thousandths, all right? All we have to do is find the X and the Z. X is my diameter, Z is how far back we're going. X, 1 inch, 200 thousandths, that was done. Z, 2 inches, that's done. Let's pop those in there. 1 inch, double check, 200 thousandths. And then our Z is going to be a minus two inches. Okay, my grooves are done. It's time to send it home. So I'm going to turn off my coolant and then I'm going to go G28, U0, W0. Some machines don't need it, some machines do. Just put it there. It's not going to hurt anything. All right, so now all we have left is our threads. Okay, this is gonna be a G76 right here. We're gonna knock out those threads real quick. All right, so let's come back to our workbook. Okay, that's all it did. Turned off the coolant, G28, sent it home, okay? So let's go a couple pages down. Oh, one page down. But let's look for a sample program here. There we go. So all I'm gonna do, so I get rid of that, I can't get rid of it is I'm going to turn on my spindle. Now notice here, G97. That is a constant spindle speed, not G96. So G97, we'll go S600 RPMs. That's not gonna hurt anything. Make sure we turn on our spindle speed. We're gonna move to our clear plane, which is gonna be 25 thousandths above the major diameter that we programmed, all right? or we'll just say one inch, one inch, 25 thousandths above one inch, that'll be fine. So let's come back to our program right here, our part, G76. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on 
my tool. So let's go. EM01, parentheses, I'm going to call this the threader, threading tool. That'd be fun. Threading tool, parentheses. Remember, everything in parentheses does not read. So I've got M01, we're going to call this T303, and then let's go ahead and turn on our spindle. G97, not G96, S600, M03, or just M3. I always like to put the zero on there, all right? So now we got that on, let's move to our clear point, okay? That is a G0, G54, X, we're going to be one, we're going to be one inch eight is our thread call out. We're going to be 25 thousandths above that. So one inch, 25 thousandths, Z, I want to be 100 thousandths in front of my part. Okay. Then I'll, I'll go ahead and turn on M08 right here. I can only have one M code per line. I can also have only one modal mode per line. So I can't put a G0 and a G01 on the same line. It won't like it, all right? So I'm ready. I am right here. I'm ready to start cutting, okay? So there's a few things I have to find, and let's figure that out. Okay? On my threading, I need to know the X, the Z, and I need to know the K and the D and the F, okay? That's a whole lot of stuff. So let's start with the X. X is the absolute thread finish point diameter value. What is that, okay? Well, here we go. We've got this right here. Here's our one inch eight, two A. Right there. That is our minor diameter, all right? That's what I'm gonna put on there. I'm gonna put on there 800, and 49 thousandths. After this, we're pretty much done with the book, okay? So let's go ahead and go back to our program, or back to our part, okay? So here we go. I've got a G96X, 849 thousandths. Now our Z, we'll have to look at our print to figure this one out, okay? It goes back one inch. I do not want to send my tool one inch back. I, all I want is for my threading tool to stop past the threads, but inside the groove. So I'm probably going to go about 150 thousandths past where that starts, or I could stay 50 thousandths in front of that one inch shoulder. Okay. Either way will work. So I'll go ahead and do this one right here. I like that better. So we're gonna stay 50 thousandths in front of the shoulder. So let's come back to our part. Okay. So I'm gonna go to Z minus 950 thousandths. Okay, it's kind of messing up on me, one second. Very good. Z is a minus 950 thousandths, all right? From here, I've got a couple more variables, which we're gonna look at in just a second. I'm gonna to have to get my K and my depth of cut, and let's go back to our sample program. Let's see what else it needs. Okay, K and a D, that's it. X, Z, K, D, and an F, all right? So let's go back to our part. K is going to be the height of my threads. D is going to be my depth of cut. F is going to be my finish rate. Okay. So here's a quick thing. We're using a one inch eight, right? You guys will like this. In your house programming workbook, eight threads per inch. If I come back to my workbook and I go down a couple pages, eight threads per inch. Okay. My K for an OD is gonna be 76 thousandths. That's it. My F right here, the lead for your feed rate, right there. 
So we have our K and our F and our D, we're just gonna make it 10 thousandths, all right? So this page will show you everything you need to know. So let's go ahead and erase this. Okay, we'll come back to our part. So let's see, it said our K was 76 thousandths, 0, 7, 6. D is our depth of cut. Let's take 10 thousandths. Our F is going to be 125 thousandths, all right? That one line of code did our entire thread. So now what we can do is we can go M08, okay? or M09, turn off our coolant. And then we'll go send it home. G28, UW, or U0, W0, all right? So now we're done with the part, okay? Except for one thing, we're gonna do a G75 grooving can cycle to part it off. So let's go back to our print. So here's our print. Now we're gonna move all the way right here, and then we're gonna go ahead and part it off, okay? So no big deal, let's go ahead and go ahead and do it real quick. Okay, we're gonna go M01, okay? Go back to our groover, grooving tool, call it grooving tool. Not working very good. Grooving tool. So that was T2. Same tool. We're not going to go to tool four and put two grooving tools in our machine. Tool two, we're going to go G96, S600, M3 for our spindle direction. We're going to go GO, G54, okay, X, two inches, 100 thousandths above the part. And then our Z has to be the length of the part plus the width of our grooving tool. Three inches plus 125 thousandths. Negative three inches, 100. Let's give this thing a second. Three inches, 125 thousandths. All right, that's it. And then we'll go ahead and turn on our coolant. So now all we're gonna do is we're just gonna come straight down so the part falls off, all right? So with that said, we're just gonna go G75, X0, because we're gonna to go to the center of our part. Z will not be zero. We're gonna keep it at a negative three inches, 125 thousandths. I is our peck amount. We're gonna keep that at 50 thousandths. And then our K, we'll just keep that at 100 thousandths. You don't even have to, if you're not gonna move over, you don't have to put it in there, all right? And then our F will be five thousandths, all right? So that's all it did. So it parted it off, it went back up to the top of our part. We're gonna turn off our coolant. Then we're gonna go G28, U0, W0. And then we're gonna type in an M30 and what that does is that tells the machine we're done. All right, that's all there is to it. And then I'm gonna put a percent sign at the bottom of my program. What that does is it tells the machine that, that is, that's it, there's no more to it. So, to recap, we've done a G71 roughing turning can cycle, a G70 finishing can cycle, and then we did a G75 grooving can cycle, a G76 threading can cycle, and then we used a G75 grooving can cycle to part our part off, okay? And then we sent the machine home. Now what I would do is enter all of these variables into my Haas simulator, and then I would see how it would run. I would look for any errors that it would give me, so on and so forth, okay? So that's how you're gonna do programming with formatting for making all of your parts. I hope this video helped. Again, my name is Aaron Runk. Thank you for watching.